uh, hello. Uh, this is going to be not something structured. Um, this is more of me shouting into the void uh, and just kind of documenting this for myself, um, the experience. Uh, if anyone has stumbled upon this, uh, I come from source engine development, um, specifically for Counter-Strike. Uh, and me and my friends who make Counter-Strike levels, uh, we've decided to make a game. And the first step to that is learning a modern engine. So this is basically a devlog uh, of that and my first one ever. So anyways, I'm just going to run through what we have uh, and kind of my thoughts at the current moment. So I have this idea for a game uh, that that's it's honestly not important what the game is right now. We had to pick an engine, uh, me and the other guy I'm working with. I haven't talked to him yet, so I'm not going to name him, but we both know .NET, C Sharp. So Unity made the most sense. We considered Unreal, but um, we don't know or want to learn that language. And from what I'm told, blueprints are good, but not everything that we would want. So we went into Unity, and after some research, uh, we found out that, well, actually from Papa Zool uh, in the Source Engine Discord, who has been a tremendous resource uh, in our learning experience, he had, uh, he already knew Unity um, seemingly very well. Uh, that man's skill set is amazing. In any case, uh, he told us that the player controller that ships with Unity is not good. And that we would want to use the a rigid body and just kind of push that around with a collider on it. So that's what we've gone with. And we, <laughs> and to be honest, I didn't know what we were getting into uh, at that point because it was, um, you know, entirely on us to handle that. Uh, we kind of decided earlier on that we want to try and get as close to Quake or Source movement as possible. I think personally that those games have the crispiest movement even with, you know, the weirdness that is bunny hopping and strafe jumping and stuff like that. So we took a stab at implementing that ourselves. Um, after consulting many tutorials, uh, I had an implementation. It was not very good. It was the first implementation. Uh, Zool went back and forth, and he ended up giving us some code that we have used tremendously, edited slightly to kind of get our character controller working. And I can actually show that a little bit. Uh, we do have movement with a horrible grid. So we can climb slopes, which coming from source, I didn't honestly think basic navigation would be something we'd have to handle ourselves. But compared to the basic uh, character controller that ships with Unity, the rigid body system seems to work better for what we want, uh, mostly because we want physical interactions with the player and the world, meaning we want objects to be able to push the player instead of the player being like authoritative. So we can climb up slopes and stuff. Um, this was here to kind of test surfing, but it, it doesn't really work. Uh, we can go up little hills. We take a huge hit to our speed when we go up these hills. This is something I still need to fix. Um, I imported some info player starts to remind me of my roots. Uh, we have a crappy crosshair kind of the center of the screen. If you're on a slope that's too steep, uh, if you're on a slope that's too steep, you just kind of fall down it. This is another thing I need to uh, address. So it's a whole thing. It's honestly, it's it's whack. So the other stuff we have is some boxes because um, every game needs some boxes. We've also written some code uh, that will let us kind of pick these up, and throw them around. Uh, this actually was worked on last night. So uh, this goes pretty cool to get working. Uh, a nice little grab mechanic. It's a little jittery in the game view. I don't know why that is, uh, considering if we pop the game view out. And this is, again, this is just a me rambling video about kind of where we're at. If we go to, like, the editor view, and I, I play this back, the cube moves, like, super smooth. So I don't know if this is something with like how fixed update works, uh, which is where we're putting uh, this code. But I don't know. It's a little, it's a little jittery. Uh, it's not something I want to get worried about right now. 
uh, I don't want to get hung up on like little details. This is this is functioning good enough. So pretty happy with that. Uh, figuring out code to move the, the the mouse and stuff. Like we had to limit your up and down views. It's all just stuff that I I genuinely never even considered. Um, now that I'm dipping my toes into like true game development. And I guess kind of the last thing that I've implemented that I'd, I'd want to share is we have no clip working again, something that's like <laughs> so basic from, from everything else. But when you have like a clean slate, you need just, it's like a sandbox, uh, environment that you have to code a lot of other things in. Um, if you're not going to use their, their controller that ships with, with unity. So anyways, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, no game yet. We can just barely walk around. Um, <laughs> we can't crouch. That's also on the list. Slopes suck. Uh, stairs are pretty much non-existent. But we can pick up boxes. We can no clip, and we can uh, kind of walk around. So that's about it for this one. Uh, I'll see when uh, I decide to make a second one. Maybe it'll be interesting. Uh, I can kind of go over things as I as I think they'd be interesting. Again, this is more of just a log for me personally that I'm just putting out there for anyone who wants to see. Um, so, thanks. Hello, and this is the second devlog update uh, in our dive into Unity and making a game. Uh, so last time we just had basic movement stuff kind of handled. Um, some of the movement stuff is still janky in the project. Our core gameplay loop has started to come together at this point, which is which is fun to see. Uh, we we now have the ability to shoot laser beams. They don't do anything yet, but I can show the the kind of the, the core gameplay mechanic. Um, is is somewhat similar to, I guess, um, someone told me, Thinking with Time Machines, the portal mod, or there's a section in the Talos Principle that is apparently uh, similar. I've never played the Talos Principle, so I, I'm, I'm unsure. But in any case, you start with, there's like interactable objects in the level. In our case, just boxes. It's a puzzle game, so of course we have boxes. And when you start interacting with one of these, it starts kind of recording a timeline on that object, and then everything will reset. And then we're able to, on demand, play that back with what we have, like a ghost player, which is why he's got a little ghost icon on him. And through that, we're able to kind of do more complex things in the environment is kind of the goal. So like you could have that ghost take that box and then I can take the box and put it up there. Um, that's a nice little crash. Unsure why. But we'll just re-record that really quick. So if I put that box there, right, and then I just start a new recording, I can then take this box. And then through the power of that recording, the the kind of ghosts can work together and and you know move stuff around so that's kind of our our core gameplay loop so we're working right now on kind of adding gameplay elements and puzzle elements um as well like we have a, a janky kind of uh tripwire switch right here that just detects when you go through it um detects boxes uh and it'll detect fake players and then of course you know when the replay guy goes through it. He's detected as well. Uh, working on some other things too. We thought it could be fun to kind of have uh, like the aerial faith plates or aerial faith plates from from Portal in here. These are a new addition um, by some of the other team members and by some of I mean uh, Jim. Um, Jim is working on this project. Jim Wood. Uh, the other two people are the Whale Man and Max Giddens. They all said they were cool. Um, to have their names mentioned in these these kind of uh, devlog updates. Uh, I guess the, the last mechanic that we've added is when you are playing back, this laser beam that you can shoot it can actually um, be used to 
kill ghosts so like you can pick up and then shoot him and then when you play it back that ghost can actually terminate the other ghost and in addition to terminating the other ghosts uh we have this sick death animation where you just kind of shrink down to the ground so you can uh kind of our idea for the gameplay loop is that you can record a situation with a ghost uh that that like completes an action uh, on one run which could give you access to more puzzle elements and then maybe you need to terminate that midway through on like the final run to actually escape the the the, the chamber right so um i think that pretty much does it for this dev update it, it's just a lot of stuff of us um you know still figuring out unity still figuring out the gameplay elements uh interaction between those those elements uh, recording code uh, and, and just stuff like that. So um, it's just a quick little update on, on kind of where we're at at the current stage um, of development. Thanks. It's been a sec since the last one. Uh, we've definitely updated a lot, but it feels like not a lot has, has really changed in the grand scheme of things. Uh, one of the main problems that we had before was we were building our own character controller uh one of the things that we have now learned is that the unity asset store is pretty good um for some things uh tons of unity games out there it's tons of character controllers at the scale that we're at for what we needed building our own character controller was not viable uh we wanted to get source engine-esque movement into our game uh but that is unrealistic for what we want that is still something that i would like to do personally at a later time is build a uh, more source engine focused character controller for unity but i don't think that's in the cards right now so we grabbed a thing called character controller pro off of the asset store and so far that's been really good it took us about a week and a half two weeks for me to cut all the code over and update everything that was a, a really big learning experience the documentation for the character controller pro uh is honestly fantastic um as far as character controllers go from what we found i think this one's really good it's only like 34 dollars um the amount of time that it saved for us was immense at this point the game itself has has kind of come a long way uh, a lot of bugs have been fixed there's a lot of new features um we can now actually play some levels and kind of show that here uh i mean this level's flawed but you can pick up a box and you know actually play back the level um and it works oh i missed that guy but I can just start over um which is nice i mean it, it's it's really it's really cool to see it work uh there's a lot of things that like i said have changed uh, we have level transitions um that work as well so like i can do this level two um these are just kind of like little test scenes that we started building uh kind of a while ago and yeah yeah uh, so far it's working out pretty good we've added a few new weapons to the level we didn't uh or to the game i should say we didn't have a lot of plans for weapons other than a delete ray which was pretty much just used to um, terminate a ghost early, uh, which should be this one here. So essentially, if, if a ghost is doing a thing, right, like moving this box up and down, you can use this little pistol to kind of stop them. And it, it just kind of ends that lifetime. So that's another puzzle mechanic that we've kind of been, been playing around with. There's some other weapons, too. Um, We've shamelessly used some of the Counter-Strike uh, weapons as placeholders um, from the workshop stuff. So this other weapon is a, uh, it's kind of like an air cannon type deal. So, and, and when you're playing back, you can like kind of rocket jump with it. So that'll give us kind of like a movement uh, based puzzle to it. Uh, and then this one is a EMP. So it'll end all ghosts within like a radius. And we have this really... Um, kind of awful star thing to denote the, the area of effect. 
that's something that I want to improve on is, is kind of our debugging tools. And we can, you know, switch between. There's some other little things that have changed, like, you know, when you pick up a box, we, we angle the, the weapon down so it isn't as, uh, you know, you can't shoot. It's not as obvious. There's been a lot of refactoring to just how things work um, with the Unity system uh, for events on, on our, our boxes and objects, our tripwires and stuff. A lot of that has been refactored. Um, but this is probably the first devlog where I can really say that uh, it kind of feels like we have a game now, or, or at least a proof of concept for a game. Uh, earlier today, uh, another person, Power Fusion, uh, kind of got onboarded with us to work on some levels. So uh, as of tomorrow when I record this, uh, I'm going to Red Bull Flick for a while, so I'll be stepping away. Uh, from this, and I'm kind of hoping that between Jim Wood, uh, Common Cran, and Power Fusion, they'll all work on, you know, various things. Uh, hopefully, some levels, some proof of concept stuff. Uh, it, it feels like it's in a good place. Um, we've sunk a lot of hours. Um, I've sunk a lot of hours personally into this since we brought Common Cran on. He's done a ton of stuff, um, which is just really cool to see. Um, kind of a bunch of things come together uh, on on a project. I'm really happy to be working on it. Uh, honestly, it's it's something that I I never thought I'd be doing. I'm just coming from like level design, but it's definitely a lot of fun. Uh, it's a lot of fun to see something kind of come to life, and it's fun to see it on uh, tools that are not Source Engine, <laughs> which is which is sweet. So I don't think I have much else to share. There's been a lot of work. There's been a lot of code. I, I can kind of show you that too we have we have trello set up there's just been a ton of like stuff that we've uh, kind of blown through in the past couple of days um like i said a lot of it has been uh administrative stuff that i've had to spend some time on um such as we've gotten like i said we've gotten uh git t set up and we decided to brand it and there's uh, a, a documentation wiki set up for us now um, that we're still in the process of building it out, but you know, there's some documentation on, on kind of w what I think should be level design principles. It's it's a lot of stuff, um, and I guess some challenges. If I were to reflect on on one of the biggest problems, it's that once we've brought someone else on who's willing to help, it's it's a challenge to take the ideas that are in my head for what I want for this project and kind of communicate them in detail uh, to, to what I envision the, the end result to be for that object. It's kind of a toss up for me. Um, I've already talked about, you know, if everyone's okay with me kind of leading what I want this to be. And then we build on that. Um, it's just difficult when, you know, I picture something. If I were to code it, I would code it the way that I wanted it coded. But, for instance, um, like some of the weapons, uh, Common Cran took those, and they, they work really well. Um, it's just it's a lot of iterations. It's like after uh, one thing gets built, then it's like, oh, actually, that's not how uh, I kind of thought this would work. It, for gameplay, it just doesn't seem, you know, how it's implemented now doesn't doesn't really reflect upon what I want. So it... it was kind of related to like I can't remember where I heard it but it's the idea of like how do you tell uh, like a robot or a computer to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and, and the, 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 the whole point of that is you can't assume anything you have to pretty much describe every step you can't just say you know oh you 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 know you get the peanut butter and the jelly you put it on the bread and then you put it together no you have to describe the steps to get from point A to point B, you know, you got to take the, you have to get the peanut butter from wherever it is. You have to open it You have to get a utensil, you know, that the whole thing needs to be kind of explained. So one of the things that, one of the main things that I think I need to improve on for this project so far is, is the documentation and communicating uh, exactly what I want, uh, which is what I hope the, the documentation is kind of going to build out. It's been, like I said, it's been a learning experience. Uh, this is our first game as a as a group of friends, and it's uh, it's teaching us a lot. I think about about the process, but it is 
it is a lot of fun, but it is so far a lot of work. Um, I think that's about it. Hopefully, next time I make one of these after I get back from Copenhagen, the 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 level situation will be fleshed out. We'll have actual puzzles that we can call puzzles uh, instead of just like little proof of concepts that are you know kind of janky. So hopefully this goes in a good in a good route. I, I want to have I want to have a game that that we can say we made together as a group of friends. I think that'd be pretty cool. Just something that's 15 minutes long, release it for free, and just you know see where it goes. So that's it for this one. Don't know when the next one will be. Bye.